Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.5 released today on all iOS 16 supported devices. iOS 16.5 is out to everyone and it released at the same time everywhere around the world and is available for the iPhone 8, 8 Plus, all the way up to the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. This released along with a bunch of different updates as well, as you can see here, iPadOS 16.5 and more. And this particular update is going to vary greatly in size depending on what version you're on. It could be anywhere from a couple hundred megabytes all the way up to many gigabytes. So it will just vary depending on the current version you're actually on. Now let's go ahead and jump right into the new features. And the first thing has to do with the news app. If we go into news, you'll see there's an all new sports section in the middle at the bottom of news. This particular section allows you to see all of the different current games, the different scores, and you can even open it in Apple TV to see the current games that are live. So you can watch them now if they're live or go back and schedule them and actually have it notify you when they're available. Also in the top left, you'll see all sports. So you can pick which ones you want, everything from NFL, MLB, all the way down to esports and Olympics. Hopefully they'll add more such as F1, maybe some other sports here in the future as well. Now in this update, Apple has added a new wallpaper that has some features that I hope they bring to other wallpaper. So if we press and hold on our lock screen, go and add a wallpaper and there's an all new pride section and you'll see it says designed with the colors of the pride flag to celebrate the LGBTQ plus community. And the new wallpaper is here, but that's not the most exciting part, at least for us that love wallpaper. The most exciting part is let's go ahead and set this is it has variable modes, which we haven't seen since previous iOS updates. So let's set this wallpaper. We'll customize our home screen. We'll leave it as is. We'll switch it to do not disturb. And you may have already noticed it switched to a dark mode wallpaper. This one actually switches between dark and light mode. So you'll see it switches very easily. And then also has a nice animation when you go in and out of your notifications. So that's something as well as when you go into your always on display, it changes also. So you can see it change there. So it's really nice. And I hope they actually bring this feature to a bunch of different wallpapers in the future as it's great to have that. And we haven't had light and dark mode wallpapers for a while. And many people have wanted that back. Now, along with that pride wallpaper, Apple introduced the Apple watch pride edition with new watch faces as well. Once you update to watch OS 9.5, you can find that watch face in the Apple watch app. Just go to your watch faces and you'll see pride celebration. And there's actually three different configurations. And just like the wallpaper on iPhone, it actually has light and dark mode. So hopefully this is a sign that we'll get more of these in the future, but you'll see not only do we have motion, we have hour marks and numerals as well. And motion brings motion watch faces. So hopefully we get more of that on watch faces. You can see here as the different colors rotate around the center and we have that. So hopefully they bring that to different watch faces in the future in maybe the next version that we see. Now, as far as other new features, well, another one has to do with the battery. If you're going to install an update prior to this update, you actually had to have more than 50% battery or the phone had to be plugged in. You no longer actually have to do that. So you can actually update without plugging it in below 50% down to about 20%. So it will allow you to do that. Also, if you're a beta tester, one thing you need to know is Apple got rid of the beta profiles with this update. Now you go into your settings, go to general and then software update. And if you're signed up for the developer or beta test program or public beta program, you can turn that on or off. Make sure you turn that off. If you no longer want to receive public betas or developer betas, you can stay on the public version if you want to, and you can just easily switch between that now, but you do have to be signed up for this actually to show up. Now they also added support for Shazam where they updated the app to add classical music support. So Shazam now adds classical music support where it can recognize that and then give you suggestions within the classic musical app. Apple also launched a couple new music features. So if we go into music, You'll see here, if we go under this one, we can see more information under set lists about tours of different artists. So as I scroll down, you'll see here for Ed Sheeran, we can browse upcoming shows. Give it a second to load here. We can see where they're taking place. So this one in Atlanta, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, you can see where it is with the maps, experience more in Shazam. So this is a feature that's available not just to iOS 16.5, but prior versions that they updated remotely. Also, they've updated maps with similar information. So if we go to London, it's only in major cities right now, but if we scroll down under guides, go to explore guides, scroll down again, you'll see that we have under the latest, 
different music venues. So they're actually recommending them and they're personally curated. So London's best classical music venues, where to see acoustic music in London, London's beloved DIY music venues. If you go into one of those, it gives more information about it. So it zooms into where, where they are and then gives information with not just information about it, but what's around it, different studios and much more. So this is really great to have additional information and Apple's always really focused on music. So it makes sense that they're doing that in these apps. Now in this update, there are a few bug fixes as well. However, there is no mention of any camera fixes. So there are some issues with the camera sort of over processing it being too aggressive with HDR. Apple has not mentioned this and there's no mention of it being fixed. I don't see that it's fixed on the iPhone 14 pro and 14 pro max phones. Let me know if you experience anything different, but I'm not seeing any change there. As far as fixes that they've acknowledged, they've actually fixed an issue with spotlight where it could become unresponsive. So prior to this, if you just pull down here, sometimes it was unresponsive, the keyboard wouldn't show up. And the same is true when you're on the lock screen, it seems to be working properly now and is much, much better. Also, they've addressed an issue in CarPlay. Now I have an Apple CarPlay device here. Let's go ahead and plug it in, give it a second to show up. It'll take just a second. And prior to this update, sometimes when you went into podcasts, your different podcasts wouldn't load properly. Now it's actually fixed where the content will load. Then you can listen to your different shows and more. So prior to this update, it was an issue. I've used this not only on this device, but also in a different car wirelessly. And it seems to be working great with this update. Apple's also addressed an issue with screen time. So if we go into settings and then screen time within screen time, they've fixed an issue where screen time sometimes wasn't syncing properly across your device whether that's an iPhone, iPad, or Mac. That should be fixed in this update. Now, there are some bugs they still haven't addressed that seem to be there, even after the RC2 update as well. So if we go into notifications, notifications seem to be very buggy sometimes. So you'll see there as I scroll up, it just sort of jumps around, and maybe that's because they're waiting to fix this with iOS 17. We don't really know for sure, but it's definitely something you would think they've fixed by now, but they haven't. Also, I have an issue that seems to only be affecting me, but has to do with the health app and medication. If we go to browse, then medications, I have log files here. And if I tap on one, it will crash the app. I've reported this in feedback in previous betas, but they haven't resolved the issue yet. So you can remove the medication and that part works fine, but it's just the log file seems to crash it for some reason. So hopefully they resolve this in the future. And on Apple's security update website, typically the list, all of the latest security updates. However, they take some time to update this. It could be minutes, it could be hours or days. So I'll link this in the description if you want to check it out, but just scroll down, you'll see the latest updates, and then you can go into those to see what Apple has actually patched. Now we're waiting for all new updates from Apple as far as features. We're not seeing a whole lot of features. And the other day I went over some of them as they announced new updates coming to iOS 17. So this has to do with accessibility with iOS 17. I went in depth in this in a different video, but this is something that's just the start of iOS 17. So last year they showed off accessibility features for Apple watch, being able to control it with your iPhone with iOS 17, we'll have some new accessibility features. So be sure to check out that other video, but we're waiting for most of those features that will probably show up with iOS 17 updated next gen CarPlay accessibility there iMessage contact key verification and much more. Now, as far as the overall performance of iOS 16.5, it seems to be pretty good. Whether you were using the RC or even RC2, it seems to per perform as you would expect. It's nice and fast and smooth and no issues whatsoever. Whether you're going into different content, loading different songs, browsing different music or anything else. It seems to be nice and fast as you would expect. The heat of the device was a bit of a concern with the RC. We don't know if they patched it with RC2, but it seems to stay nice and cool. There were quite a few complaints prior to this with the previous update where people were not happy with it and it was just heating up randomly. It hasn't seemed to do that since RC2 and I haven't heard of any complaints of that since. Now, as far as battery life, let's go into settings, then we'll go to battery, battery health and charging. You'll see I'm at 97%. 80% after two years is normal, according to Apple. So nothing to worry about here. 90% a year or so, or 
down to 90% in a year or so is pretty typical. And you'll see yesterday I had three hours and 56 minutes of screen active time, seven hours and 52 minutes of screen idle time. So it's doing okay, but that was using about 65% of the battery, maybe 70%. So battery life for me has been okay, but it hasn't been great. But most people that use this say it's the same as 16.4.1 or better. About half of the people I asked said it was better. Half of them said it was the same or worse. So we'll have to wait and see after hundreds and thousands or millions of people actually use it. And as far as if you should install iOS 16.5, well, for the bug fixes alone, as well as the security updates, I would highly recommend it. Typically the security updates are important and keep the device secure. So I would recommend it for that reason. And most people say 16.5 throughout all of the different betas was more stable than 16.4.1. So I would definitely recommend it. As far as iOS 16.6 betas, usually they release them the next day or possibly the next week. Apple doesn't usually say that publicly, so we'll have to wait and see. Seeing how it's later in the week, I would suspect next week, but you just never know. So we'll wait and see as far as that goes. As far as iOS 17, we're only a few weeks away from seeing what Apple has to offer on WWDC 2023 on June 5th. So we'll see that there along with watchOS 10, which is said to get a redesign and much, much more. So I'm looking forward to that and hopefully they have some great features and different changes we weren't expecting not just changes to the control center but maybe icons and more so that's everything with ios 16.5 not a huge update and hopefully we'll get even more with ios 16.6 and a lot more with ios 17. let me know how it's going for you in the comments below and what you're looking most forward to with ios 17. if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper of course i'll link it in the description like i normally do and if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe and if you enjoyed the video please give it a like as always thanks for watching this is aaron I'll see you next time.